podcast about things um with me this morning um the um logical creator and um motivational obstruction destroyer uh world-renowned allison tar um and uh legacy comment uh gardener uh chris reynolds on the internet respectively is allison plus and um Oh, wait, wait, who are you? Your binary sequence, right? Yeah. No, I'm jazz sequence. Oh, jazz sequence. Wow. I'm Man. the jazz of the binary I... jazz, and <laughs> you are the binary of the binary jazz. I, sorry. Failed I... intros today. Obviously, none yeah. of us have had a coffee yet. Yeah, well, we're, we're probably running 10 minutes early, which means that the caffeine hasn't quite kicked Caffeine in. fish hand emotion is nowhere near what it should be. Um, it hasn't quite kicked in yet. I don't know, this is like my third cup, so it probably should have kicked in. <laughs> or possibly too much caffeine. <laughs> not, not likely. Um, the premise of the show, right, is uh, I'll dash the podcast. Allison brings a topic. Chris and I pretend we know something about it, whether we do or don't. Uh, and then uh, eventually get frustrated enough to beg Allison to explain the concept. Um, followed by a series of... Uh, Silly questions at the end. Um, we do other things on the internet too. If you like music, we can find a music genre you like, and several you don't. <laughs> genre here at our website. Uh, yeah, seven episode. It's it's been coming up with some good ones lately. John, yeah, yeah. No, last night, last night it it, it the genre nader uh, Twitter bot came uh, came up with uh, tech new. Techno with an extra I, O. I saw that. Yeah. And I thought that was. I think you retweeted that. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was pretty awesome. That's why I saw because, that. because techno O, like tech new, that, that's, that's where it's at. I, Should yeah. we set it up so that double O's are occasionally replaced with an O? Or like an O, a U. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. We could definitely add that in. Put an, put I can't even speak it. I don't know if I could make it work. <laughs> we'll add some O's. I mean, there's only a couple things that actually end in O, um, so there's only a few in instances where that would actually be a thing. But uh, right, but and so we wouldn't do it every suffix, time. But only the suffix O, adding O to a thing, which comes obviously from the genre screamo, uh, is is just adding that onto a techno. It just seemed pretty pretty awesome. To me. I love it. I love it. A techno, techno, double O's. Are you either way? Because techno is, I mean, so yesterday. Exactly, but tech yeah. new. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. <laughs> I have to go research some new bands that fall into that category. Yeah. Some new bands? Some new N-O-O bands. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, you can also uh, ask us questions. Um, yes. We have a website, binaryjazz.us. It's got a form. Uh, where you can save Allison from having to come up with the questions on her own. Uh, so you just submit a question in the form and then we'll, we'll ask it on the next episode. Or you can ask us questions on Twitter uh, because obviously, I mean, honestly, like our, our Twitter account needs more people. All in. Proudly powered by WordPress, not our Twitter account, but our website. Yes. <laughs> Although I guess part of our Twitter account has to be powered by WordPress because a lot of the content I mean, we're, we're powered by WordPress, so. Yes. And coffee. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Maybe and a bit too much. <laughs> and Tech New and Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I don't know why I thought of this. I think because I'm looking at myself in a uh, dancing back and forth and feeling a little foolish about that. Um, I was on a flight one time, and um, I left early in the morning, and I pulled out my electric razor in air and shaved on the way to my destination because I didn't want to look scruffy. It's like a 5 a.m. flight. I had a meeting at like 11 a.m. and flew from Jacksonville to Chicago and then drove to this meeting. So I didn't want to shave when I got up at, you know, 
three, whatever it was, to get to the airport for the five o'clock flight because it would have been ineffective, you know? <laughs> so I shaved wall and air. And I felt foolish then. I guess maybe that's the connection. <laughs> I can only imagine people's reactions to that. No one said anything. Well, because <laughs> well, who's going to challenge the person who's... <laughs> I don't know. It was an electric razor. I mean, it wasn't like I pulled out like shaving cream in my seat. That would have been a little yeah, more. Yeah. Than no. Who, who's going to challenge the un, the the white dude unabashedly shaving in the middle of the flight? Yeah, he, you he, could probably he, shave anywhere, couldn't you, as a white dude? <laughs> yeah. I've been I mean, public. anywhere in public, not on. Your, never mind. This is, this is going <laughs> off the rails. You do that too. <laughs> I've been, but not in public. Had people like clipping their nails and things like that, which. Well, this had to be back in the days, early days of Twitter. So I'm sure I like I wasn't like anonymously publicly shamed for it either. Anonymous. Although now I'm gonna have to search like some jerk shaving on my flight. Oh, so many jerks I'm sure will come up. I was gonna say that's yeah. not I'm just one more. What's one more? <laughs> that's yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. Well, anyway. Uh, the topic this week. <laughs> that was like, hey, now back to our show. <laughs> we can mention and then quickly, quickly move away from again. Sure. <laughs> I'm just crying. This is our custom. Yeah. Um, apex predators. Apex predators. And those are predators um, at the top of the food chain. Yes. What do you know about them? <laughs> uh, they have no natural predators themselves. Are humans apex predators, in your opinion? Yeah. I mean, Obviously. yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I only mean we have predators, the only but thing, the only thing we also have weapons, so. Yeah, I mean, we're our own predators, and the only thing that would prey on us is, is when the, the android apocalypse comes and takes over. Just, what if you're um, in the woods? Like I'm a level, like I'm level two. I, I got real deep into this scientifically because I discovered that then there's like ratings of like trophic levels of okay. like. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it, I mean as a as a species, as a species, I would say that we are absolutely at the top of the food chain. As individuals, like I don't own a gun and I'm never going to own a gun. So if I am alone in the woods and there it's there are bears in the woods and the bear decides that I'm its dinner then I would obviously not be at the top of the food chain because I'm not going to beat a bear to death. <laughs> so if a bear, obviously you're not going to have a gun, but if you pulled like a banana and gestured as though it were a gun, do you think bears have enough exposure to handguns to be like, oh my gosh, that guy a, has a gun? No, or are I you mean, just I like think bears garnishing like, his oh dinner? Oh my God, that looks really tasty. Like, ooh, think, not only, think, not only is it dinner, but it has a dessert. Dessert. <laughs> the bear's um, like, there's an added bonus to this, and he's waving. I didn't it. know he had a banana. <laughs> banana just sweetens the deal. There was a woman um, that was uh, attacked by a, a bison in Yellowstone recently. I saw a bison. Yeah, mm. yeah. It was charging. It was running, uh, and she didn't see it. It came around a curve, and it like she broke several bones or something. It was. It, was, it doesn't happen frequently at Yellowstone, but when it does, I mean, there's things are all over the place, and they're big, scary animals. They're huge. As a kid, we drove to, I didn't drive, my dad was driving somewhere and I was in the back of the van and there was this, I mean, we caught, we like in some, some state road in, in the plains, we came over and there were all these bison, like this herd crossing the yeah. road. He's like, cool. So we came down this hill and we came in, we were in the herd then and they were much smaller further away. And I'm sitting in the back of this van with this thing, like looking down at me through the window where my dad going like, ooh, maybe we should have waited, right? Like as this herd yep. like crosses around. Oh, it was so cool. Um, I mean, so, as like an ignorant kid, right? Like this is fantastic. As an adult, I probably would have been a little more panic. Yeah. Um, they're beautiful though. There is a time I went to Yellowstone, I've uh, been to Yellowstone a couple times now. And there's a time, that one of the times I went to Yellowstone, there was a crazy bison. So crazy bison was in the middle of the road and it was just walking around in circles. And, um, that's what it was doing is walking around in circles just kept walking around in circles in the middle of the road walking around in circles and they had like the forest service or somebody like try to escort the bison off the road because it was like two ways of traffic and it was just walking around in circles in the middle of the road blocking both ways and so they needed to do something um yeah that was my bison story crazy bison so my uh my soul took yellowstone 
we, we, when we got there, um, we were like, oh my gosh, look at the elk. By like day seven, we were like, oh, more elk. But the bison, <laughs> it really lost their luster. Um, I think it's just, they're just massive. They just, yeah. They, they look, they have a look about them, right? Like they're, they're very docile, but man, they can mess stuff up if they decide to take a liking to it. You know, I mean, it's just, they're, they are tanks. They are impressive beasts. Whether or not you're holding a banana or not. I don't think a banana would keep a bison from knocking you over and trampling you. I was, I actually, my, my debit card, you remember back in the day when it was like, you could do like any image you wanted on your credit cards and debit cards I and stuff? I still do that. I don't even know where I could do that on my, my, Probably my your debit bank. card website. I know, I, I went looking the other day actually, this is why I was thinking of this. Um, my image is a photo of a bison I took at Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, maybe I should show it, but maybe I shouldn't pull up my debit card on. I had that same thought when you started talking about pictures, because I have a picture on my debit card. Uh, and I was going to show you, yes, you can do it. And here it is. But again, with the, taking the picture of the credit card. Yeah. Just to show you my, <laughs> all my bank. Let me hold it real still so you can write the numbers down. <laughs> that, that sort of like nullifies the, yeah. And then real close. Wait, let me flip it over so you got the security code as well. <laughs> yeah, financially, I'm clearly not an apex predator. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's different areas where you can be a bit better than, than others. So I was not Ooh. aware that there are levels of apex predator. Re predator well, like there's a whole, yeah, there's a whole rating. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. No. But like, so level one is like plants and algae that make their own food, basically. And then level really? two, yeah. Plants so algae that make their own food is a predator. Well, they're level one, so they're at the bottom. <laughs> they're they're not the apex predators by any means. And then but like that, level that, two, that they're a predator at all just seems weird to me. But because they the make it, of, they make it and then they eat it. I guess. <laughs> well, I make my food and eat it, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm well, a predator I know. So I think does that mean you're a level two? <laughs> Well, I have, I have several questions before we go further. Number one, what is the opposite of apex? Uh, vertex? That's a good question. Okay. I'm glad that I was not the only one that like, drew a blank. Well, let's assume that it's suffix for the purpose of this conversation. No, um, that's not no, what no. it is. I know it's not. <laughs> for, the purpose of this conversation. for the purpose of this conversation, let's just be very incorrect. <laughs> it's gotten us this far, hasn't it? It's true. <laughs> Let's ride um, that leaf. <laughs> so is is preparing food separate than like like if I prepare if I make bananas foster is that a different thing than just like yanking a banana off a tree and peeling it like is there something more apexy about doing it raw as opposed to the preparation process no I think it's just like what okay. you're actually consuming not how it's prepared the preparation okay. part, process is just showing your domination over the over the banana I eat the I eat the peel too. <laughs> I ate the crap out of that banana. <laughs> oh man. Also, I love the banana theme. I was like, oh, bananas foster. Like we're just really, really going with this. Well, once I started thinking about a bear with a or Chris with a banana holding it, like pointing it at a bear, it's kind of been stuck in my head. <laughs> I also want that artwork on my wall somewhere. Chris, like <laughs> a bear. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know like those old 80s like caricature sketches you'd have now like the big head people for prison, for yeah prison. i need a big head chris holding a banana and a bear and the bear like yeah so <laughs> listeners of binary jazz like, make it so scarf? what's that was it was oh it was a weasel a weasel scarf uh necktie necktie neck neck, new, neck weasel neck yeah. weasel bring a neck weasel <laughs> god yeah, so if any, if any listeners out there want to give Gary a, a gift for the holidays or just to show your appreciation for the show, now you know how to show your appreciation. And, and if this is your first episode and you're wondering what the neck weasel hails back to, don't sweat it. You don't need to go back to the back catalog. It's not that great. Just know that the context is weasel, the addition of weasel makes things more humorous. It's Allegedly. It's no neck weasel. In this case, it, I mean, it's a bear being held up by a banana. How much more humorous could it possibly get? <laughs> Uh, that bear being held up by a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Holding the weasel. And That's a very good point. <laughs> See, weasels make everything more funny. And now you're going to have to listen to the back catalog.
<laughs> the back catalog. Problem solved. Maybe we should make the back catalog. Like okay, so we're talking release. about the levels though. There's there's the level one. There's level one, which is you you produce your own food uh, and then you eat it. And level two, I suppose, is you go to the grocery store and get your food. You're an herbivore that eats plants. The herbivore that so you're eats. a primary consumer. That's what that's called. So I think I'm level two, because then level three is our carnivores that eat herbivores. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah, not so, so. much. <laughs> So I was kind of, to be honest, I was kind of disappointed. I was only level two on this scale. Is there, it goes is there a level, level four? Five. <laughs> so level four would be carnivores that eat carnivores? Yeah, level three is carnivores that eat herbivores. Level four is carnivores that eat carnivores. And level five is the apex predator that just, they have the top. Eats everything, delete they everything. Eat. So do I eat carnivores? Yeah. yeah. Wait, don't you? Wait. I mean, I mean, I guess I, I eat fish. I guess I'm, I making fish. A lot of, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but. No, it's, you can, whatever. I mean, so, I mean, chicken, obviously, is not carnivore. Although chickens eat bugs. So, yeah. I mean. Counts. I mean. I don't, think, I don't think chickens are con considered omnivores, are they? I think they're considered herbivores, right? I mean, I'm on the same level as a rabbit, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I've eaten a rabbit, so. So you're yeah. definitely at one level above me. <laughs> what, where does, where do, where do bugs play into this? That's a good question. I would assume that they are animals, yeah. like animals that could be eaten and therefore raise your predatory level. Because it's, it's, it's alive, it's sentient to one degree or other. It's not a plant, so therefore it is, if you eat bugs, you are a carnivorous animal which then and, and maybe this is the problem i've always had with it this there, there's always been for the last several years there's been like news about like people eating bugs like bugs is the new like mod thing to eat um yeah. like prepared crickets and stuff and and people are like oh vegans it's <laughs> this doesn't uh this shouldn't harm your sentiments about like animal cruelty and i'm like but bugs <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel any better about eating bugs than I would about eating meat. So, well, let's shift the let's shift the concept then. What what about lab grown meat? Yeah, people have tried to to suggest that as well. And while that does eliminate the cruelty, that does make it inherently cruelty free. Um, at this point in my life, I don't think that I would go. I don't think I would eat lab grown meat either. Even yeah, it's a better name than lab-grown meat for sure. Number one. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Like, but but it's it's also I mean for me what's interesting is lab-grown meat is much more efficient, you know, and I think that's cool. So I don't know. I'm done with lab-grown meat. I'm done with eating sex. Need, they definitely need a rebranding though, because nothing about lab-grown meat makes me be like, well, yeah, let me get it. Yeah. I think I think lab grown meat is what we can give all of the uh, all of the omnivores uh, who don't want to be vegan. You can go be vegan by eating lab grown meat and not actually be vegan because you're eating still eating meat. Whereas the rest of us who have made the decision to not eat meat, I mean maybe some of us would eat the the non animal meat, but I think there's probably a fair amount of us that still would be like ew. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, so um, Netflix, Bill Nye has a, a show on, Bill Nye Saves the World. Yep. Uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. And um, I mean, it's better than the other crap I watch on Netflix, right? So um, the, there was an episode on, on meat production. I, was, I, was, I had my laptop open, so I wasn't paying that much attention to it. But there was one segment looking at the, and that's what caught my attention, was the efficiency of lab grown meat. Um, cows are not very efficient. <laughs> pound for pound what it takes to build and create manufacture a cow grow a cow <laughs> whatever you do with a cow feed a cow to like the raise, it's like a raise a cow it's like a what was it? it's an animal that has a that has feelings it, it is raised like any well other. i was sort of trying to frame it in the sense of how they're it's it's a manufacturing process the way it's currently done but yes, yes raise a cow so um, in any case, it's like a four to one ratio um, pounds in versus pounds. No, it has to be more than that. 
I don't remember what that number was. Maybe I'm off by a factor of something. But you mean a four or forty? It's it's not efficient. Yeah, the amount that it takes to feed and sustain a cow is very very high compared to like the amount that you could use to like just grow that food and feed other people. Well, and going down, it was like cows are crazy uh, inefficient. Pigs less so, chickens less so. Um, seafood is a pretty net in, net out, pound for pound. I mean, pending, pending species, obviously. And then insects were like, I mean, super efficient, you know? Insects were fantastic. So, which also like got my, I'm like, ooh, I wonder if I can go to Aldi and pick up like a case of crickets or something. So weird. I'm down. I'm down. I, I mean, I'm... If I can get spaghetti and crickets, like sign me up. Yeah. There was, I think my kids did at some point get like a, a bag of crickets, as in like, like you get a bag of chips, but these are like crickets with flavoring on them or something. And I'm like, ew. So chocolate ants were a thing for a while. Ants are pretty tart. No. I don't want to know. Yeah, no. <laughs> now uh, I know that. Now that's in my head, Gary. <laughs> In, in Asia, like, I mean, you've seen the photos, like the crickets on a stick is like a street food, you know? No. Oh. No. Well, I do have to argue that things on a stick are just generally more fun to eat. Uh, I mean, it's also deep fried, so like... And, and vegans don't have nearly enough stuff on food on a stick. It's true. It's like, because I just feel like... Oh, yeah. man. It's true. Other this... Times, I, I mean, since we've totally like jumped off the rails on apex predators here, I had this uh, teacher in, it had to be middle school. No, yeah, middle school, I think, uh, biology teacher. And there was an earthworm festival he would go to, and they would throw earthworms into buckets of cornmeal and then deep fry them, put them on a stick and sell them. He's like, it's like an inside out corn dog. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. No, I but, mean, I don't know if he was serious. I have to assume he was because he had no sense of humor. But that was like, what? And to this day, I remember that. An um, inside out corn dog? That's how you sell something like that to somebody? No. Well, that's how you sell it to somebody who's going to the Earthworm Festival. So maybe. Um, okay, so, so to reiterate, the earthworm was thrown into a, a bucket full of cornmeal. And this was like days before in preparation yeah. for the Earthworm Festival. Yeah, this wasn't like immediately. Right, before. right. But, and, and he's, his argument is that is an inside out corn dog because I would argue that that's a normal corn dog with a worm inside. Yeah. Because well, no, so here's the thing like the, the earthworm is somehow the corn on the outside of. The, the earthworm was on the outside because its digestive tract runs right through the middle. So throw the earthworm mm. in the. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is right? No. That might be where I draw the line. Like, I'm not trying yeah. that. No. So. I was, like, trying to be open-minded. I'm like, no, can't do it. <laughs> Let's go back to bananas. <laughs> <laughs> if you throw a banana in cornmeal, though, it's, it's not going to do much. Well, it's like, it's like, it's like that <laughs> coffee. It's like, the, it's like that coffee that, well, yeah, actually, if you throw a banana in cornmeal and then you deep fry it, that'd be fucking awesome. Um, I, I, well, I was thinking like this mental image of bananas and cornmeal and just, by itself. just sitting there <laughs> waiting. It's not doing anything. <laughs> Do something. Uh, it's like those, like those, what are they? It's, it's like a type of monkey or something that they, or maybe it's a type of sloth. It's a sloth. It's a type of sloth. That they feed uh, this particular coffee bean and it poops it out and then they roast the pooped out coffee beans. Yeah. Yeah. Which is supposed to be some like fantastic. Coffee. So would you try it? Is a question. No. Okay. Something that is has been in or is still in an animal's digestive tract is not something I'm going to consume. Right. Okay. That's. I fair. also I also don't think I have the palate to differentiate the pros that people are probably acclaiming it to have. Like they're just like I'm with you there. Like and this I'm is like, good for Folgers. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just like, this is, a, I love Tim Hortons. This is great. Their dark roast is just, just stunning. <laughs> People are like, no. <laughs> so I don't need to like be paying for 
poop coffee. See, I probably do have the palate to, to taste the difference with coffee because I have tried, but um, but yeah, no, I still wouldn't. So I'm not, I mean, something with, with the earthy taste of poop is not something that I would want to add to my coffee. <laughs> It's not what you're looking to add to your experience. Hmm. Really, the fecal notes really hit on this cup. I really, I hope that maybe we should have had a disclaimer at the beginning, being like, "If you're drinking coffee." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, my understanding is that the, this particular coffee is particularly nutty, and I also don't want to under, I don't want to think about or or conceive of why it is nuttier <laughs> than your normal coffee. Oh, that's oh, what? What? <laughs> wow. Apex wow. Predators, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I had a hunch that you'd know what it was, but I couldn't have... Uh... <laughs> you didn't know that we were no, going who, to the... To the yeah, the, who the saw that coming? Out with coffee. No. Goodness sakes. Wow. Um, there are many levels, though. It's kind of like the Dewey Decimal System, where you can like get really in there and be like, I'm a 2.2. Um, I already like it. So I, I already I, like it. Well, lots kind of hierarchy. Yeah, I that part I was like, that's really interesting. And then there's obviously a bunch of arguments about where humans fall within that. Um, and there was one study that I read that well, put them put them similar to pigs or anchovy, which I thought was. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like it seems like it seems like either we are flawed as humans or a system that ranks animals based on what it consumes and it ranks animals that consume animals that also consume animals as higher than animals that consume animals that do not consume animals. It's just, it's a very, I don't know, biased and weird kind of way of ranking things. Well, only if you take it as a value judgment, but I don't think it's a value judgment. I think That's it's a matter of, of explanation. Like this is like a, like that shark is going to mess you up, you know? So stay away. Like there's, there's like a certain amount of this, like I know innately that like that thing has big teeth and it looks angry. Like I am not going to threaten it with this banana, but like, you but know. you would be fine threatening a bear with a banana. No, I'd be fine with you threatening a bear with a banana. I'm not doing it. Um, but, but a bison, right? A bison doesn't have that look in the sharp fangs. So maybe I would threaten a bison with banana. I would be wrong to do so. But on the basis of how it looks and the hierarchy of what it eats, right? I've never observed a bison eating a human being. Yeah, a bison. I've observed someone threatening a bison with a banana. But I digress. Um, you know, like the shark. I mean, I, I can definitely, I've seen sharks eat seals on YouTube or whatever. Bison right? else, like, it's the same level in the food chain as, as Allison and me because they just eat, they, they're herbivores. So there you go. If you think, if, I guess, I guess my point for that is, is if we're feeling a little bit like insecure about our level two uh, apex predatorness, we're on the same level as a bison, which is pretty badass. Yeah. So but you again, you're making a value about. judgment. It's not a value yes, judgment. It's, it's just a statement of fact. The I, other thing is, oh, the other thing that comes into play is how much um, energy is like, because that's the thing, right? It's not just like, oh, that creature will much mess you up. It's like it will consume you and produce energy from you, and like, and then it has wow, some, that makes it suck a lot more. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really, it's it's worse than just being messed up. It's yeah, like, and then the difference is is if the animal it's consuming is also an animal that consumes other animals that consume other animals and just gets to Ouroboros. It increases the math percentages quite a bit. There's like formulas and stuff and symbols that I don't, that are way above my pay grade. <laughs> beyond, what do you think about fish mind. though? <laughs> I mean, fish are constantly eating other fish. Sometimes. You know? Not I mean, there are certain fish that are eating other fish, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of fish that are like, oh, that's a snack and boom, like that's it. Like if you're born and you're a small fish and you're not like in a sheltered area, like you're, you're a meal. But the fish that ate you is also a meal. And the fish that ate the fish is a meal. And it's, I mean, well, I, mean I would it is guess that in, it's not just like a complete linear. Right, right. It's, There's nothing that precludes fish three is, from it, being, yeah, like no, fish no. one isn't a pass through fish two to become dinner yeah. for fish three. I get that. But I mean, pass through back to the earthworm thing. I meant like it doesn't have to be consumed. It doesn't have to exist inside of fish two. Although do fish have these conversations like, yeah, they take the fish and they just throw it in like a whole pile of other fish ones and then it's like an inside out corn dog. 
Oh. Fish are so weird. Corn dogs for me, and I didn't even know that I was going to be bummed out about that. Oh no! I, I mean, if, anyway. if that's what ruined corn dogs for you, I don't feel bad. They should have been ruined already. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Orca, orca are apex predators, and they're because they and they're cute. Well, cute. I don't. Well, that's a whole another episode. Is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Orcas are deceptive with those. I feel like th they look cute. I can't because they look like they're smiling, but they have a mouthful of really sharp teeth. And the, and and the eyes are really in the front, but they get the spots that make them look like their eyes are way back, and they look all happy and grinny. But really, yeah, they are, they're, they're mean. I mean, I don't think they're inherently mean. I mean, they're apex predators, and I would not want to hang out with one because I look like a meal to them. Did you see... That'd be bad camouflage. There was this video of a whale that was, um, that ended up pushing this woman, the scientist, out of the water. And she was just like, very like, what's happening? I don't want any part of this, but it just kept trying to get her up out of the water and she couldn't figure out why. And then when she finally got back to her like science boat and looked back, there was like a shark, a huge shark in the water. And the whale was trying to basically be like, get the hell out of here. And of course they had music and I started crying. <laughs> it was a beautiful video. <laughs> but I she's she studied whales for like 30 years and it was just like this whale was like doing her like this amazing thing. I don't know. Anyway. All of a sudden. Do you think the whale, do you think the whale, cause I, I saw the headline. I didn't see the, the video, but I saw the headline. But do you think the whale knew that like recognized her and, 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 or like if it didn't recognize her like personally, like recognize like stories about her, because I totally think that, that like whales and dolphins and things are, are really intelligent animals and they communicate with each other and, and, and elephants do too. Um, and, and like they, they can talk to each other across great distances. And it just makes me wonder like, the, like that there are these stories about this woman who, who hangs out with the whales because she studies them. Like, and so they knew her or they knew of her. And so like, well, there's a shark there. And this is, I mean, it's like, it's like, 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 I don't know, like you, if you see Malalia, being attacked by a mugger or something you're like you're gonna go like no go there's a dude and you need to go somewhere else just i know you don't know me you just go that way <laughs> you know like no that's but that's totally where my mind went where i was just like there's some sort of recognition that she's she's there for the greater good she's not just like another version of a small fish or prey and something needs to happen to like get her out of the water basically the the other thing I consider is perhaps it was like the situation where you're driving the car and you see a turtle on the road and you stop your car and move the turtle out of the road. <laughs> Whale was like, I don't know who you are. I don't know how you got here, but you don't belong here. Let me get you back to where you're safe. You know, like, that's this a, thing a bad that spot happen. for you to be. That's the thing that does not happen outside of Florida, Gary. Really? You don't have turtles? <laughs> Wait, the, the, the turtles or just the stopping for them? <laughs> I mean, if there was a turtle in the road, I would totally stop for it. But no, I have never seen a turtle in the road. Are you serious? No, I've never seen yeah. It. I've probably personally removed a you dozen stayed. turtles from the road in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've also, my mom ran over an alligator in the road. So that's yeah, Florida. that also has not happened. <laughs> right. She was driving. It was a two lane road. And there was like, what is, it looks like something fell off a truck. And she got closer. There was traffic in the other lane. She could go anywhere. So she up over his tail. And yeah. I think alligators are another apex predator, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Oh, man. Alligators well, are so lame. Well, your mom came along. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> and believe me, I can relate to that alligator. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, so we're, we're the part of the show where we uh, wrap up the topic and ask other questions. Or are asked. Did we learn anything about apex predators? Well, you kind of already knew. I mean, like, there's the yeah. whole the whole level system which yeah yeah i'm gonna have to google that system. so yeah. um okay so my first question uh other than tom hanks which celebrity would you use to advertise a campaign to bring back typewriters wow john cusack that's a good one um Hmm. Is a good one. I don't know why. I, 
<laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. Either. I think, I think the way he sells, uh, really, I think the way he sells the character of, um, of being a record store owner and high fidelity and also the way he portrays the assassin who doesn't really want to be an assassin in, um, gross point blank. Uh, <laughs> I had to look at my video show. Um, <laughs> I, I think just gives him a sort of a, a, a <coughs> feeling that that uh, that would uh, go well with typewriters. Yeah, Will Smith, but I feel like they would be like neon, like throwback, decorated, like looking typewriters. I'm trying to it's think a of new rebranding. I'm know. trying to think of an actress who could equally sell typewriters. Um, I don't know. That's a little bit more challenging. I don't know why. That's I feel like it's more likely that a musician would be the one bringing back typewriters. As so opposed like to Jack White. Yeah, like Jack White, yeah. <laughs> we immediately okay. are like, well, he did records, so. <laughs> <laughs> he must love typewriters. <laughs> I was going Michael Stipe, but okay. I can see Jack White. Oh, Michael not Stipe. Only, not only did he do, did he do records, but he's like adamant about like the recording process and like not using digital tools. And that's kind of old timey. So mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it fits with the motif. John Cleese could uh, sell typewriters. Mm. I, would, I would buy a typewriter from all these people. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing with all these typewriters? I know, I'm like, oh, all these limited edition typewriters all of a sudden. <laughs> wow, that's a market, limited edition typewriters, geez. We need, some, we need a swag store, we need to sell typewriters, people. They're all, all typewriters are limited edition these days, I that's think. That's true, I guess that's true, yeah. Sadly. Yeah. Um, all right. If you had to classify all the books in a library into three categories, what categories would they be? All books. <laughs> um, I think possibly this shows my uh, identity as a parent, but I think there'd be fiction, nonfiction, and kids. <laughs> oh, I was thinking like, um, fiction, nonfiction, and like, formerly nonfiction. <laughs> formerly nonfiction. <laughs> like <laughs> old, old textbooks and stuff, and like old ideas that have since been proven oh. incorrect. So like at some point they were pushed as nonfiction, but like, the earth really is not flat. I guess that's like, Regardless of what these 400 pages of- Or like, you know? like really old, uh, really old atlases that, have Russia as a single country and that sort of thing. Right. Where you're like, I can't yeah. think about this atlas because <laughs> because it doesn't I mean, to that end on it or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting. I, I, although I would opt for a continuum. I would like fiction, nonfiction, and then it would have to fall somewhere in between. Sorry, I can't do three categories. Everything is gray. There's no black and white. But it's binary. <laughs> can't can't do it. Can't do it. You're yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I only brought two questions this week. Well, let's talk about Apex Predators some more then. That's true. Because if people submit more questions, they'll earn my undying gratitude. And submit they will no people. longer be Apex Predators. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I will never be an Apex Predator in, in probably most areas of my life. <laughs> Yeah, applying applying, I applying it. Apex predatory dumb predator dumb to other areas is, is something we didn't cover. I do like yeah. the idea of a financial predator though, in a good way. <laughs> Just like crushing. <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. I have a prop. You have a prop. And a banana? Of course it is. Yep. That's that's where the banana came from. Well, but there's also kiwis over here. Kiwis? It's not kiwi season at all. It's Florida. Florida. <laughs> it's always kiwi season in Florida. It's always kiwi. What other fruit do I have here? Just apples. Yeah, that's it. No mangoes for you today. That's too bad. Oh, the mangoes, they're not great right now, but they're starting to get there. In about another month, the mangoes will be oh, so good. Reasons to mm. move to yeah.
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.